We only have Ray. Ray's we there, only have Ray here from the city. Do yes. we? Um, I'm blanking right now. Who's our other member from the city? Bo. And we don't know about Bo. No, we haven't heard. He usually responds when you text him, though. I noticed that. Well, here I go. You've got a engage. way to you've got a <laughs> way to get him uh, involved, engaged. Then we'll be good. Then we'll have four, and if 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 the debt makes it, that would be a bonus. We need to have one from the city and one for the county in order to qualify, right? Um. Uh, plus, I think at a minimum, yes, but then we have to have the public member, which is Vedette. So, oh, shoot. I think it's three out of five. Uh, three. Four. Yeah, I think it's three out of five, too. Um, so we probably can proceed with the three. So hopefully, Bo and Vedette will make it. Well, we're going to make an educated guess. I... Uh... Uh, texted Bo, we'll give him a minute or two. Yeah. Welcome, Laura. Laura Mallory from First Transit. Hello there. How are you? Hey. <laughs> We're good. Good. Yeah, We're Mark couldn't healthy. make it. So, you know, he's roughing it on a beach in Maui right now. So, uh, Oh, yeah. how terrible for him. I know. It's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're glad you're here, Laura. It's good to see you again. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, it's been a minute. You know. Well, Bo's response to me was a thumbs up. So I don't know if that means he's coming to RCTA right now. <laughs> or he just likes us in general, which is good. <laughs> could, could be. I don't know. <laughs> uh, hopefully he'll get on here pretty quick. Yeah. We could. Um, what we do have, I believe we do have our minimum, if I'm not mistaken. So Yes, for voting purposes, you only need a quorum. And you guys that, have a quorum with three. I, so I I thought that was correct, Nicole. Thank you. So I'll go ahead and call this meeting to order, hoping that uh, Bo will, will chime in here pretty quick. And we will start. Well, I don't see that we have a flag anywhere. So behind maybe Ray. we will forego. Behind oh, Ray, Ray has a flag. Hey, there. Ray that's great. Okay. We will conduct a Pledge of Allegiance if you would join me. the republic for which it stands and one nation one under nation god, under god uh, indivisible, indivisible with liberty, with liberty and, and, justice and justice for all, for all. <laughs> thank you right very good thank you uh, i guess i did not i i always uh forget to do the official roll call so nicole if you would do that please for us director smith Oh, where'd he go? There he is. He is? Here. Director Altman? Here. Director Starkey? Here. Chairman Short? Here. Uh, next on our agenda is public comment. And if I'm not mistaken, there is no public. <laughs> so for the remainder of the meeting, we will forego that formality unless we have some public chime in, then we'll give them their opportunity. Um, moving on to item four, the consent calendar, which there is no consent items. So five, approve the minutes of the June 28th, 2021 board meeting. So moved. Right. Got a motion to accept the minutes. Do I have a second? I'll take that. Oh. Uh, Altman, uh, Mr. Altman, uh, give us a second for that. Could we pull the vote? Director Starkey? Yes. Director Smith? Yes. Director Altman? Yes. Chairman Short? 
Yes, thank you very much. Okay, item six, discussion and approval of temporary increase in COVID-19 hazard pay. Joe, are you taking this one? I'm gonna start it off and kind of be the MC, but I am gonna get some help from Dan Heron and Fernando Hernandez who can tell the story on the ground uh, better than I can. Um, Very good. This, this item, I didn't know for sure if we were gonna bring it to you guys. So I didn't mention it last month when we met or two months ago when we met. Um, but just to kind of recap, when the pandemic started uh, early last year, so in March, and, and then in eight, we finally took some decisive actions in early April 2020, one of which was to stem a sudden loss in drivers, folks that didn't want to, didn't feel comfortable doing this job because it is high contact with the public. Um, we instituted a $2 an hour across the board um, hazard pay for our, um, all of our hourly staff here. And that was really helpful. It immediately improved morale and, you know, um, let them know that we really appreciate their, their effort and their, their, their resolve and, and loyalty. So that's been in place. At the time that we did that, we knew there was some federal stimulus, whatever you want to call it, economic pandemic support money coming, but we didn't know how much and how long it would be and all that. So it's been in place and it continues today at $2 per hour. Since then, the federal money has come to uh, crystallize and come to fruition. And now we're, we're receiving uh, at last count 1.22 million in one-time funding from the FTA for, but pretty much all that seems to be restricted to operating expenses because they want, that's where they felt the need was when the pandemic hit so many transit agencies. So that means um, we can use the money for some things, but we can't buy buses with them. We can't fix up our facility. We can't buy bus stops. What we can do is uh, the deep cleaning. So since last April, so for about 18, 19 months now, we've been doing the nightly deep cleanings. We have a contractor that we're paying pretty good money for to do that. That's obviously an eligible expense. The hazard pay that we started a year ago that we're going to be um, recommending we increase today is an obvious eligible expense. Um, any kind of PPE and stuff that we did for like the air, the air purifier systems that we put in the buses, we think we'll get reimbursed for that, even though they say no capital, um, but because it, it's a COVID operating thing uh, to improve the safety inside the coaches. So what's on the table today is um, a proposal to, um, if you look on page, I guess before I see, I wanted to cut to the chase, but I'm still building up the drama. So um, in, in the discussion, if you kind of look on page two, what we've committed to so far and done so far in the first year, year and a half of this pandemic is approaching about 300,000 a year in extra COVID expenses that we've done. Uh, and that, that's made up of a, the biggest piece, biggest single piece is the current contract with Palm Industries where we're paying about 130,000 a year. So it's a little over 10 grand a month. Uh, and that's for the nightly deep cleaning of all the buses, uh, interiors. Um, that's been in place for a while. We do think we could probably renegotiate that and maybe get a better price at some point and get it to come down some, but um, it's an important part of our toolkit of, of trying to keep- On that going. note, Joe, I don't know if you've seen the recent invoice, it has gone down. The new bill is close to 7,200 bucks. I saw that. I was wondering if they made a clerical error in our favor. Yes, so, okay. they did. Okay. So will, will it stay at 72 or is it- Yes, that back? is correct. Okay. Okay, that's good. Okay, so so this number is going to decline from say 130 a year to probably about 100 if my um, barn out can math works. Um, we're we're spending about fifty thousand dollar a year on the current two dollar an hour hazard pay. So that's you reach that by the two dollars plus the cost of doing business. So it's about two forty per hour of the employee times the amount of hours we're running now, which is a reduced reduced service that we've been running for a year and a half since the pandemic. So if, we, if we're able to build some service back in, that number will go up a little. Um, our lost fares have been about 50, 60,000 a year from the, our ridership before, which is not a lot, but for us, it, it, it adds up. And then we spent 50,000 on the one-time anti-COVID uh, systems that we talked about earlier, the air purification systems mostly. So um, our annual outlay is about 300,000 this first year, meaning we have about four years worth at the current pace to burn down the one-time money and hopefully the pandemic is over by then. Um, 
So with that said, we feel that staff is recommending that we increase this hazard pay. And I wanna flip the, the mic over to Fernando to talk a little bit about the, the difficulties and challenges he's been, as you, you may recall back in June, we, we presented to you guys a package to reinstate some service, but that was uh, the caveat on that is we gotta have um, staff to do so. And we've been unable to reinstate that service to date. And here we are at the end of August because we can't hire enough drivers to, to run the service. We're barely running what we have now. Fernando, can you tell us some, uh, some anecdotes and what you've been going through trying to get people hired in here? So what we've been going through is we've increased our sign-on bonus to $1,500 uh, and from 500 to 1,000 and then 15. And so far what we're seeing is the ones that are applying are folks that need to apply to set the goals for EDD in order to pass so that they could continue to collect their checks. So as soon as we get the interview, we interview them, we go to call them back and give them an offer letter, they don't call us back. So they basically just move on to the next application that they're gonna apply for. And we're rolling- So, so wait a minute. Hey, go, go ahead, Bo. They're, they're just using you as a stepping stone for uh, their unemployment check? Yes. So we're roughly getting about an application a week. Um, we had three applications come in for fuel or washer and all three of those disclosed to us that they smoked marijuana. We run off a of federal guideline so we can't hire anybody that smoked marijuana. So if we had pushed them through, they would have failed the drug test anyway. And we haven't had any more applicants come in for that position as well. So we've been pretty much in limbo. And then we got hit with two of our staff that got COVID tests positive. So we've been running pretty thin as far as operations go. Yeah, for sure. And what are you what are you seeing, Fernando, as far as the competition in town? What are what are other so right now the school district is pushing 18 to 20 dollars an hour. And then Bo, go ahead, Bo, you're muted. Oh. Um, and then uh, Babbage Trucking and the Recology is pushing close to 20 plus dollars an hour plus incentives uh, that they have going on. So it's, it's a challenge to get anybody even that has experience because we also increased our uh, wage for experienced drivers as well. So it goes up to five year category, which would push it to close to $20 an hour. And we haven't had any bites for experienced drivers as well. That's a rather dire um, yeah. prediction, and I think you'll find it's pretty common in the uh, industry and in, in rural areas. Uh, we're going to be having those problems. The recommendation we came out with is basically to. Uh, help correct that problem. It is on a temporary basis. We can always uh, uh, re-examine these things later, but we think we feel that um, adding another four another two dollars to the uh, current four uh, current two dollars is going to help uh, tremendously with the the uh, recruitment itself. We would also like to help. Uh, those people who have uh, been on the front line from the first. And many of those were, were veteran drivers who had worked years to get up to the $16 an hour level. Um, and now we're recruiting uh, uh, at that level and above. So um, there is a certain amount of discrepancy there. And we've written in a, a little bit of money for um, a one-time only bonus or reward uh, for uh, the loyalty of working all of those times. I do want to point out, uh, we do uh, transport a number of dollar ride, uh, uh, sometimes in smaller bus, a smaller bus with people who are on their way uh, to test for COVID or get treatment for COVID. And plus, we've um, 
just had so many uh, incidents uh, in the uh, Del Norte County. Uh, I checked last Friday and um, the health statistics say that in the last 14 days as of that day, uh, there were 671 cases of COVID sobering. Indeed. So I think with that, to, to bring this back to the board for discussion, I think if not now, when, I, mean, I don't know who come up with that, but if not, who us? If not us, who? So I think this is the time, especially now that we know the magnitude of the federal support and the limits on it, that we can't, okay. you know, we can't address our capital projects that are underfunded with it. We need to use, oper, you know, use it for something relatable to operations. This seemed like a perfect fit. So Look, we're asking you guys to give the increase. Go ahead. I have a question. So you're talking, a, if, if what I'm reading here is right, a thousand dollar one-time bonus for the drivers, correct? For the drivers that have been there, correct? Yeah, all the hourly staff that have been there. So drivers and dispatchers, yeah. Okay, now I'm cool with that, but I, I think that we can do, I think we, what if, because there's some drivers that have been there longer, right? There's some that put in more overtime than others so is there a way to break that down to do to do it, it, and some of it might come out to more than a thousand some of it might come out to just under a thousand but back pay them from the let's say from the start of of the of the year okay so we'll say from january back pay them on their overtime and then on their their regular pay that way, if you back pay them on their overtime and you back pay them on their regular pay, the ones that are there that are already making more money, they're going to get a little bit bigger of a bonus, which they deserve. Does that make sense? So, so are you saying that uh, the guys who have been with Redwood Coast Transit longer would yield a, a bigger bonus check? Is that is that where you're getting? Oh, and, yeah, and, and I also, do. I guess there's the overtime component. Yeah, I think what so he's saying let's is. Say, let's say we went, okay, three $3.75 for every overtime hour that they work, and $2.50 for every regular hour that they work. They work. Right. right. Back date that from, from uh, January or, or whenever, when, whenever you guys feel that it should be backdated from. But if you do that, then the ones that are making a hot, little higher rate are going to get a little bit bigger of a bonus. And, 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 and they deserve it. I just think it should be just giving a $1,000 bonus to everybody across the board for ones that work harder than others. That's not fair. So what, what I'm hearing you say, though, Bo, which I totally agree with, is that we just instead of giving a bonus of a thousand dollar one-time bonus, you're saying retroactively implement this increase of $2 per hour to the beginning of the year. Well, I'd like to work the math out. That was just an example. You know what I mean? Right. Like um, we'd have to decide, of, of course, uh, director short, we, you know, and Ms. Stark, we'd, we'd, we'd have to figure well, out, you know, a good, price to retro yeah but yes you're, you're exactly right that's exactly what i'm saying do we have enough money for that uh guys i don't have to look i don't, I don't think that was the intent of the staff i think the intent of the staff was to immediately uh implement the two dollars an hour extra because we've been given to ever since the pandemic started it was i think it was a one-time bonus that, that bo was suggesting we rather than flat give out a thousand per body we would go back and look at maybe uh, a metric of how many hours worked. Fernando, Laura, can you guys think of a, a possible fair way to do that? Looking back, because Bo makes a great point. Some folks have worked more hours and carried more OT than others. So um, the only hard part with that is everybody's <coughs> been doing overtime because we've been so shorthanded well, then since, everybody, yes. since the beginning, you know? Yeah. And everybody will be pretty happy with their bonus, right? I mean, the re doing the retro pay, if you're doing the same amount for each person, right, I think that misses the, the longevity aspect of the people that have been there 10 years versus 
people that have been there a year. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's easy enough to run the payroll hours so I can, you know, and, and do the math on what the, re if retro is the way you want to go, we can figure out what that would cost. But um, I, don't, I don't, that just is basically giving everybody the same thing based on what they worked rather than what you guys were talking about, the intent of longevity and the veteran drivers getting something more for hanging in there with us for so long. So my, I guess my question is, is that you proposed this, you guys are happy with this. If, if we were to approve this, you guys would be like, this is exactly, we are so happy with this. We are good. You guys don't feel like we should think about doing more because I'm assuming you proposed this, you're hoping that we'll approve it. You guys would be happy. I mean, we'd be happy. We'll always take more for the drivers, um, you know, our employees, <laughs> of course. Um, well, the, you know. the only three that know about this, is, or the only ones that know about this is us. We haven't even discussed this with the drivers. So, so <laughs> Fernando, could you, could you tell us just off the top of your head, how, how many out of, we're talking about 16 people? Is that right? Um, we have Six, 10. 10. Okay. Out of the 10 people, how many have been with us for more than 10 years? One. And say more than five years then? Three. Wow. So those four people, I think if if I can put words into Bo's mouth here, those those five people, uh, I think is what Bo was intending. Uh, the one person who's been with us for the 10 years, the, 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 the three or four that have been with us for more than five years should see a little bit more of a bonus as a reward for sticking with us. Uh, is that right, Bo? Is that what you're getting at? That, that's exactly what I'm getting at. So is there a way for Laura and Fernando, can you think of a way that we could implement this, this bonus, uh, keeping that in mind for those people who have been with us for a long time? Yeah. So we, with the newer drivers, we could start at a thousand and then go up from there, the older drivers go up to 25. It really depends. I mean, well, it, it depends on how much money you guys want to spend on that. Um, okay. So the where we start and end is really up to you based on, um, I mean, we can easily put the seniority list together, including all the staff yeah. um, and get that over to you so that we can, you know, see what makes sense to, you know, the starting level for the new kids versus the people that have been there for 10 years. Sure, that uh, we'll stay within. Very old. Joe, do you no have uh, what, what's our budget? Is where, uh, you know, where, how do we split this up? How do we know how much we have to spend on these bonuses? If I can jump in here, uh, we've got Certainly, a Dan. procedural thing too. We would love to have you guys approve this today. Um, you may need to uh, give Joe your, your, uh, general manager some leeway to put together something that scales it up based upon long longevity and uh, overtime and come back to you with some numbers uh, probably by email. Uh, so you might be, be considering passing this plus directing Joe to come up with the numbers because you wouldn't be feel comfortable or the, about passing this unless you saw that we simply have enough money uh, and I can tell you we've got enough resources it's a question of um, you want to be a little firm about uh, those commitments that might be a way out give him the latitude to come back to you on the second uh, uh, part of the bonus yeah we can give it up there and I wanted to circle back on one other thing that just popped in my head. So this, this issue that we're grappling with, with sustainable wages and retainable, being an attractive employer that has top talent here, this goes before the pandemic. We just have this unique opportunity, thanks to the coronavirus to, and all this outside federal help. We can go ahead and intervene now um, but what I do worry about is if we go too high, and not, no one's proposing to go too high, um, but we don't want to raise their pay above what we can eventually sustain once all this one-time money is gone. 
and I'm pretty confident that we could sustain in the range of 18 to 20 bucks an hour into perpetuity, as long as we don't expand and put a bunch of fringe service out there that eats up our budget. Um, so we've talked about that. So this would actually, this second bold move, if we do it today, would get our wage scale about where we want it. A lot of folks now are in the 16, 17 range, so that would get them up around 20, 19. So I think we'd become an employer that can keep bodies in here and meet our, you know, meet our goals. Um, as far as uh, the figuring out the one-time bonus, I mean, I think I'm glad we did it and we've had a great conversation. So if you guys approve like some sort of language that allows us to implement it around a target of a thousand per person based on, for example, seniority or hours worked or something, we could work out the details and, and give you guys an update either in an email or at the next meeting, which will be just a month from now. I just think that would be a selling point for for recruitment. Uh, you know, I get it; it's a one-time thing. But the employees that do get this, and then your longevity employees that get a little more. Yeah. You know, when a new employee comes on, they can say, "Yeah, you know, this happened," and it may maybe it'll happen again. And then they're selling your brand for you as well. Your employees are going to sell your brand when you treat them good. That that was my my also my thought with the with the retro retroactive pay was the are the employees selling the brand as well? I mean, are they you know doing all they can for for the company? Are they real company people? That's so. Anyways, uh, point well taken. Oh, well, thank you for that. Um, what Dan was saying, uh, there's some value to what what he said there with the procedure that we have to go through um so, so i'm not sure if it would be entirely correct to revamp whole discussion but we could um approve this thousand dollar bonus but on top of that um have Joe and Dan and Fernando go back to the, back to the drawing board for those employees that uh, um, that have stuck with us for for those years and uh, and and I agree, Bo, in my opinion, deserve uh, a, a thank you and and in the, uh, in the area of a bonus check. Um, so. Um, with that, I, I don't know what your guys' ideas are in that respect. Um, hey, you've been kind of quiet on this. Um, uh, do you have any opinions as to how we should handle the, the bonus check situation that we're talking about? Darren, your, your connection's yeah. really bad. Um, but... I think what you said, no, I think what you said was, <laughs> <laughs> um, so what, I, what I'll do is I'd like to make a motion that we approve the temporary increases and as outlined of an additional $2 per hour and also motion to approve that we, um, approve a one-time bonus to all RCTA First Transit employees um, of $1,000. And then I'd also like us to give direction that for the next meeting, that for those employees with longevity, that we get additional information to perhaps provide them with an additional bonus at a later date. Does that, does that sound like a good motion? Very, very good, yes. It do I sound better now. Did it coming through? Uh, no, this really. is terrible. <sighs> we can catch a lot of what you're saying, though, Darren. So I mean, if you want to just keep okay. up, I mean, we're catching the majority of what you're saying. Okay, I I thought maybe it was the the earphones, but apparently it's not. Um, so we have a motion on the table from Director Starkey to approve the two dollars an hour. And thousand dollar bonus. After that motion, we will consider the recommendation to uh, consider 
additional bonus for longevity for those employees. Is that correct? I go ahead. Bo. Oh, I I'll second it, but I just want to clarify something before I do. So that's a total of four dollars an hour increase, correct? Yes. No, that that'll bring it to four dollars an hour. They got two dollars an hour starting last April, and this will be an additional two for four total. Oh, okay. Above yeah. what first tra- total. So that's above what first transit pays them. So that's four dollars out of our budget, and the rest is paid by first transit. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I second that. I second that motion. Okay, so we have a motion in a second for additional two dollars an hour and the thousand dollar bonus. So Nicole, would you pull the vote, please? Uh, Director Altman. Yes. Director Smith. Yes. Director Starkey. Yes. Chairman Short. Yes. And for that final piece, talking about the additional four or five in your employees do we have consensus that we would like Joe and Dan and Fernando to go to the board and figure out a way to congratulate those employees for sticking with us that uh, that's pretty much unanimous consensus there Joe so uh, you would work toward that would be we definitely want to um, thank those people for for sticking around and okay. I just want to say that was great, Bo, to bring that up. I wouldn't have thought to do that, but that was excellent. Just wanted to tell you. Uh, that Thank was you. Good. That was very good. And Laura, I guess you're probably going to be uh, in <laughs> an integral part of this discussion as well. I'm sorry. I apologize for leaving you out there. <laughs> not, a, not a problem. Um, really quick clarification. The $2 an hour, is that said? We didn't, we're not retroing that, right? We're going to go just forward immediately with implementing that going okay perfect yes that's the way i understood it yes great thank you okay um that was that was a great discussion you both leading that off um moving on item seven transit maintenance and operations contract discussion discussion of draft rfp and timelines you're on mute joe yeah, Joe's talking when he's I, muted. I've done that. I, I, get, I get in less trouble that way, you know. <laughs> Is there anybody who's not talked when you're muted? I, I want to know that. <laughs> it's uh, it's one of my best speeches that no one ever hears. Okay, so <laughs> this item is uh, should be pretty brief. And thank you for Laura for hanging here with us for one more item. So at our last meeting in June, we sort of made like we're at like a crossroads decision on whether to considering we wanted to intervene significantly in our wages here to um, stabilize our organization. Um, We talked about two ways of doing it. One was just bite the bullet and do a new RFP, which is what Caltrans advised and would be cleaner uh, for operations and maintenance. So that's for the contract that First Transit holds currently and has held a series of them for about 15, 20 years. or the second option was maybe try to slide through an extension and then just pay them the, the, the hazard pay on top of it and, and hope it flies. But um, any new contract or extension has to be approved by Caltrans. So we felt there was considerable risk that they wouldn't approve that. So at that decision in June, the, the board's direction to me, general consensus was get ready to do the RFP and get started. So that's what you have ahead of uh, in front of you today is just an update, but we have some concrete dates And as you see, a lot of them are coming right up. So it's gonna be a very busy fall in order to get a new contract in place by January 1. So the proposed, so you'll have an attachment that's about a hundred and some pages that took up most of the packet. That is the first rough draft of the the RFP itself. It looks familiar because it's the same one we used five years ago, except with a lot of updates. So um, it'll go to autumn for attorney review after tonight. Um, And it'll also go out for what I like to do is like a peer review in the industry. So we'll send it to folks like Laura and Mark and their counterparts at other agency or other uh, transit contractors um, to become aware of it. The most important thing is that we know we're about to do this, but also they can offer some feedback on stuff that could be improved. So we don't have confusion and a bunch of addenda uh, or, you know, it's almost hard to avoid any addenda, but the less the better. 
Um, so that both of those um, things, the industry peer review and getting this into the attorney's hands will happen almost immediately after we're done here tonight. Uh, then uh, we need to get, um, Caltrans has to approve it. So we will uh, send that to them as soon as autumn's done with it. So um, they'll be reviewing it mid-September. Hopefully they're able to keep up with our timeline. One of the good things about doing the process when we are most privatized contractors, at least in California, where I've spent my career, most of them do it on the fiscal year calendar. So most of those guys are out to bid in the spring. So we're the odd duck. We're on the calendar year calendar just because that's what happened back in 2016. Darren, you probably remember, but anyway, so we're on the calendar year. So we actually should get a lot of attention because the um, business development folks aren't as busy this time of year as they are in the spring. So we're banking on that so that we get good attention for this and, and everyone has time to submit a good proposal. Um, this schedule has us getting to bids will be due or proposals will be due, I should say, on October 25th for a award of contract at what's tentatively a November 22nd board it's meeting. Ready. Yeah. Oops. What are we doing, boy? Oh, you want his bottle? Hey, Ray, you're, you're not muted, what? man. I was going to say, what was that, Ray? <laughs> so we oh, want sorry. the bottle. I'm sorry. I'm it's, it's milk. <laughs> that's a good point to stop, but that's basically it. So this is, uh, if you have any, um, you know, there's, there's certainly a lot of key nuances to the RFP, um, a lot of which are kind of like um, revolve around what we're going to ask the proposers to provide to us as part of the contract versus what we'll provide for ourselves. And that's changed a lot over the last five years. So we're updating a lot of that. Um, for example, do we want the proposers to provide the paratransit scheduling software again? Um, because even with all this money that we're luckily receiving from the feds for the pandemic support, they still are holding fast that we can't use it for capital. So one could argue all night whether software is capital or not. But um, for example, we probably will want to go ahead and require all the proposers to propose and provide us with a, a paratransit software system like First Transit does today. Um, not quite as sure if we'll do the same thing with our AVL CAD, which is what the, the computer system that's on the fixed route buses. But um, that's another story. I don't want to get bogged down in that. But we'll need to decide whether we want to require all proposals to include those costs and those systems in their proposals or if they'll you know, let us handle it and we'll provide it for them. Um, any questions about the schedule or the process or? No questions. Ah. Oh, I thought that just seems on. like a, that just seems like a lot for a, that's a short timeline for that much. It seems like to me. Yeah, it's going to be busy, but I, I, I don't know. This is new to me, too, so maybe that's right on time. I don't know. It's a little more it's a little more compressed than the textbook model would want. But um, we do leave like five weeks, five weeks. So one of the things you got to think of is, is if there's a change, um, they the, the new contractor will have to match all the wages. You know, they're going to propose. So there's going to be a lot of HR work bringing all the employees over to a new agency. Um, and you need a few weeks for that. We got five weeks in there. It could be a lot more, but at least I think I've seen it done in less. Well, maybe Laura, you can maybe talk to that with your experience in the industry. Five weeks enough if there is a transition to pull it off? Well, hopefully there isn't a transition, but if there was, yes, they should be able to do it in five weeks. I mean, it's a small enough location with the number of employees that five weeks is should be totally doable. Now, whether you can get Caltrans to approve your stuff and within that timeline is a whole other story. Right, and we, yeah. we, we gave Caltrans like two, three weeks and that better be enough, but it may, yeah. that, that's a potential critical path right there. But yeah, there is a lot to do, and but I think we can do it. But um, most of the board wasn't there, but I think Darren was with us suffering back in those days. So the same thing happened in late 2016. We were trying to do an extension, Caltrans, Put the kibosh on it they said no you got to go out um and uh we were able to pull it off in this kind of time frame and it went, it went pretty well it's doable
Joe is just a uh, small thing looking through this contract. Is your address changing? I, I noticed that you were highlighting the, the mailing address and. Yes, it is. I, I've just, uh, in fact, I was uh, just over there about an hour ago. I've got a met the mail room address. So I'm, I'm here in Crescent city now. So that's good. So we're going to, the, the old Santa Rosa address will be retired and they'll all be going to the um, 900 North Crest. Oh, very good. Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. Just, just curiosity question. No, no, I've been meaning to do this and yeah, I just happened to be this meeting that uh, yeah, I needed to come down and open the box. So that's good. Okay. Any, uh, any other questions from the commission? Ray, Bo, we're all good. Um, I'm looking at the, at the first page of the agenda. What is our action item here? Nothing. Uh, it was just an update discussion only. So if you have any comments, send them oh, to me in an email or something. Uh, otherwise, we'll be back okay, with the, the final version in a month at our next meeting. Oh, very good. Okay. All right. That's that's good. Um, yeah, I, I know Autumn's not here, but I see her notes that she's put in there. She's She's really a... At, at doing these reviews, I, I wanted to definitely compliment her. Too bad she's not here. Um, so yeah, we'll look forward to seeing that next, next time. Me. All right, we'll we'll move on to item eight: approval memorandum of understanding for Cal ITP Far North Group uh, ID project. Yes, thank you, Chairman Short. Um, this item is. We've been working with, ever since the pandemic hit, one of the cool things that has come out of that is that um, the transit operators up here in this region started to get together for regular calls and communication and project and information sharing. Just, you know, <laughs> none of us had ever experienced anything like quite like this. So um, that's been a huge positive. So other than, you know, talking with each other about how we're protecting our drivers and backdoor boarding and no fares. And we've tried almost everything there. Um, but some other interesting stuff started to ha happen as well, including um, collaboration on longer term projects like uh, electrification of our fleets and alternative fuels, that sort of thing. So um, we've been meeting every other week on average. We were supposed to meet this morning, but it got canceled. So I have to find out what happened. But um, one of the projects that has emerged from this, um, we were approached by the Cal IT Pro, ITP program, which is the California Integrated Travel Project. Um, they want to see rural transit agencies, especially groups that are already working together, like the Far North Group, um, take on um, the challenge of getting Google real-time uh, transit data up onto the web. So right now, for example, if you open up Google Maps and you you pick the little train symbol and you want to plan your transit trip, it'll just give you the print schedules. It won't tell you where the bus actually is. So it'd be off. But there's no time that sophisticated AVL CAD systems than currently all the far north group possess. So this project um, is called a ferry and modernization project. It's going to do two things. It's going to give us the real-time Google Transit, which is a level above what we all have now. Plus, secondly, and this is even more exciting, I think, it's going to allow each agency to install credit card readers on the board each bus. So people will finally be able to just use their regular uh, credit card or debit card to tag the bus and pay for your fare and no longer need exact change or cash or a paper pass. So that's it's been going on in Europe for a long time, but it's just starting to roll out here. And the far north group was picked because we're all pretty small and rural, but they think we have the capacity to pull this off. So that project's uh, the first one, and it's it's cited if you look in the attachment. They mentioned that as like our first big project, but it's certainly by no means the last project. Um, we're excited about future stuff like electric bus procurements, uh, maybe even hydrogen, however that goes. There's a lot of other things we can do together. And the MOU just sort of sets the stage for that and talks about this first project where we do the fare integration. Um, I'm sure there'll be a question or two about how much our fares will need to change. And luckily not much, because we, we were out ahead of the curve in 2017 when we went to a kind of an equity-based, because I thought the former system was crap. 
So we went to an equity-based, distance-based fair, and that's actually the model that the group's gonna do for the whole far north. So our, our fairs won't change a whole lot. We were pretty close to right on as it turned out. We may have to raise them or lower them just a few cents, but they're, they're pretty close. So we don't have, we should not have a very painful process when we go to adjust the fares, which I'm guessing will happen in the next year. Um, the project's working towards that. Any questions? Any questions from any of the commissioners? Yeah, well, so I kind of was going through that and there's no, to get to the to to get out of that, and this is the MOU for this far north, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. To get out of that isn't gonna. Um, there's not gonna be any any impact financially, correct? I, I haven't seen at least I haven't found it, but it just says they just would like prior notice. So let's say you right. were to we were to okay. All right, thank you. Yeah, um, I mean, I think we'd be, yeah, on a simple answer, if you had to go with a simple yes, no, it'd be a no, there's no no financial penalty. But I mean, let's let's project what'll probably really happen. If we're if we're doing the um the contactless MasterCard Visa, you know, fare collection, it's most likely that Humboldt Transit being the largest, best staffed of the agencies up here, they'll probably be like the clearinghouse and the point of contact with the banking um, vendor. So if we were to pull out, they'll probably be, you know, it'll probably be a little painful to, you know, get us out of the system. I don't think it'll cost a lot of money, but there would be some work involved to, besides just sending them a letter and saying, we don't want to do it no more. But yeah. Well, thank, okay. That's, that's my only question. Thank you. You're welcome. And I don't have any questions, but I just want to say that I know Joe, that Dan gets on you for being wordy, but uh, the reason that we don't have any questions is because you kind of cover it all. So, uh, you know, I wish I could come up with something, but I'm like, no, it's there. So, uh, you know, you and Dan worked that out between your two of you, but I think that your wordiness is well worth it. Thank you, Thank Director you. Starkey. And Dan, did you hear that? I did. <laughs> <laughs> Thank oh, you. We're going to miss it. Say a little louder for those in the back. Is that what right. you want? <laughs> Why are we losing this director? I don't get it. <laughs> No, that's it's so right. funny. I don't talk that much in real life, but yeah, I do get a little verbose in my stuff. <laughs> no, I appreciate the clarity. I, at least I do. So thank you very much. Um, oh, Valerie Ray, you have any issues with this uh, this contract or this draft on the timelines? No, none at all. All righty, Ray. Thank you very much. Oh. Look forward to seeing that in the future. This is just information I have as well, I believe. Um, I think, are you looking for us to approve this? Yeah, yeah. I think we, we do need a motion. Is, uh, it, so is it an action? I, I'm sorry. Yeah, so I'll make a motion that uh, we approve entering into the Far North Group Transit Providers MOU. Okay, yes, see that now on the recommendation. Thank you, Valerie. Um, do we have a second to this? I'll second that. Thank you, Paul. Uh, Noel, would you pull the vote, please? Uh, Director okay. Altman? Yes. Director Smith? Yes. Director Starkey? Yes. Chairman Short? Yes, for me. Okay, moving on to approving, approve the memorandum of understanding for we just did that i i forgot to mark that <laughs> adopt resolution 21 21-22-01 CTA state of good repair project for fiscal year 2021-22 bus stop improvements yep uh, this one will be real brief um we've been uh, each year uh, as part of the process, we're required to select our project list. You know, some, some larger agencies get enough money to do more than one project. Well, not so much for us, but uh, we have to submit our list. So we have one project each year since the, this is a relatively new funding source. So I think we're about four years into it now, four or five. Um, so from its inception, we've been using it for bus stop improvements. Um, this year's allocations down a little, probably from the pandemic, not too bad. 
we're, we're getting 42,221, at least that's the estimated amount at the end of the year, they reconcile, so it could be a little different. Um, we we're carrying a balance as of right now at the start of this fiscal year, we have a balance of 82 grand. So this uh, added to that will get us up to about 125,000 in our bus stops fund. Um, I do believe this will probably be the last year we can afford to do to put all this money, you know, it's not that much, but still we're going to need it, as we've talked about in the past and in the short range plan, we we're running out of our local money that we use for bus replacements. So we're probably going to need to divert this over, but the, the balance of 125,000 will buy quite a few bus and bus stop improvements. So you shouldn't notice any slowdown of our um, efforts to add more shelters, benches, and schedule holders and stuff, uh, at least for the next couple, three years. That's a lot of money. We can't spend it down that fast. Uh, and then at that point, uh, maybe if uh, other money has come along and we're able to meet our bus replacement local match needs elsewhere, then we could always, re you know, each year we get a chance to program this wherever we need it. But I'm just kind of warning you, this is probably the last year for a while that we'll be able to do bus stops. But that's the recommendation. One more year of that, we'll get our balance up over 100 grand that we can spend down over the next couple of three years. And then we'll deal with the next year if we have to go to bus replacements with it. Very good, very good. See our bus stops being in pretty good repair with that. That's great. So is there any uh, questions or clarifications from anybody? Uh, my only question, if I could. Um, so right this ahead. is special, bus stop repair. Um, I know in the past we've talked about um, adding a bus like a transit station or not a trans, but you know, like an area where there's a bathroom and a, and a kiosk. This money could not be used for that. I, I know you've told me this in the past, but I just wanna. No, it could be. You're, and you, you bring up a good point. Um, it very well could be, yes. Okay. Yeah, that would be, if we do the mobile kiosk or something else and we need money and we probably will, yeah, we could tap this fund. That's a bus stop improvement for sure. Yeah, I think about that a lot because when I drive by down at the cultural center, you know, the bus driver is out there taking a break or whatever. Um, and I just, it would be so nice to be able to have something. So I do hope that we end up being able to have, you know, a restroom or an area or something. So it'll be future down the road, but I do hope that that's something that we, we get here. Unless someone donates some property over there by M Street, you know, we could always put a new location in. I know. I think about that too. I'm like, oh, I wonder. <laughs> That'd be a great hub. That. that would be a great hub. All right. Well, with that, I'll make the motion that we approve resolution 2021-2201, approving RCTA's fiscal year 2021-22 project list for 42,221 in Senate Bill 1, State of Good Repair Funding for Bus Stop Improvements. Thank you very much. Commissioner Starkey. Yeah. I feel like I've been seconding everything, but I'll second it. <laughs> That's okay. We'll we'll take it, Mo. That's all right. <laughs> Thank you very much. Nicole, would you pull the vote, please? Uh Director Starkey? Yes. Director Altman? Yes. Director Smith? Yes. Chairman Short? That's a yes for me, for sure. All right, moving right on down. Item 10, update project timetables. SRTP mini update. Your design control center transit hub. Seems we were just talking about that. So give us an update there, Joe. We'll do, yeah, this will be a quick one. So the, um, the SRTP and Tamara has asked us to name it the interim update. So that's what we're going to call it because it's unusual. We don't usually need to do one, but then again, there's not usually global pandemics. Um, so that update of the SRTP will, it could happen as soon as um, October. So that might be on your agenda next month if we need to approve an agreement. I've talked to the consultant that worked on our last project is available and has presented a, a very competitive um, proposal to do the update. So. Anyway, so there's a good chance that'll be on the docket for our next meeting at the end of September. Um, I'm reaching out to a local civil engineer to help us with the cultural center hub project. So that one is probably the next in line over the winter that we'll work on. Um, that's a very exciting project. I'm very interested in it. And um, 
and, to, and the DNLTC is helping fund that. So it's not just out of our project money. Um, so that one's probably second in line and the electric bus is third. There's a little less fire under us on the electric bus because we don't have enough money to really build it yet anyway. Um, so we, um, we can have that maybe be in the spring, next spring and summer. So that's it, that was a rather short update, but we, I promised you one last month, so we decided to, to do that. Um, any questions about the sequencing or those projects at all? Oh, oh, Bo, did you, did you have something? I'm sorry, oh, I, I missed was, it. No, I was itching my face, I'm good. Okay, all right. Hey, you don't have uh, any questions for Joe? Okay. All right. That's Joe. Thank you very much. Uh, we're on operations report. First transit. Fernando, you want to give us an operations update and then I'll mention the, or maybe you can cover it. We're going to, we're dealing with another change in the, in the construction approach at last chance grade. You want to tell the group about that? So the operations. So as of this week, you all know that the last chance grade is open now to 30 minute delays and there's no delays. So as of this week, we did we left it the same, but as of next week, we're gonna talk to Curry and put the schedule back to where it was, where we left at three o'clock instead of 2.30. So we'll move forward with that. Um, and that'll help us out. Uh, today, the times table was great. He made it through and he got to town back at 12.15. So it's nice to finally have that road back open to only 30 minute delays. I think we've changed our schedule this summer and spring about four times. So hopefully this is it. Go ahead, Valerie. Valerie, Valerie do you have a question? I just want to just add something is that um, I talk with Caltrans a lot. Um, so Matt Brady told me that while they, they are done with their four hour delays, in the next few weeks, they may have two hour delays. And that's just to get that final part of that mesh down on the bottom. And so if, if there's a time, because I'll talk to him, I've, I've asked him to make sure that the two hour late doesn't interfere with school. Right. So, you know, it has to be somewhere between after eight and before two um, so that the school bus, you know, the kids aren't getting delayed getting home. But if you have a specific time that you don't want it to be, if you could just make sure that I know that too. And I'll make sure I relay that to Matt Brady. Yeah. So the best time in the afternoon would be 245 to 315. To have it open. To have it open. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And that seems like it'll, morning, it'll yeah. coincide with school. So yeah. it should be okay. Okay. Well, I know in the past when they did the two hour delay, as soon as that bus passed, they closed the road down right at three o'clock. And then our bus doesn't leave the center until three. So by the time we get up there, it's closed. So that's why I say 315 would be best. And Fernando, I think you touched on some of our staffing woes earlier, but maybe you can- Yeah, so two, two of our staffing here, one driver, one staff uh, came down with COVID uh, the last 14 days. We have one back and one still out. Unfortunately, one just happened to be our shop tech. So we do have, we do have uh, coverage here covering for everything. So as far as that goes, the dispatchers and myself have been driving to cover the routes. We've had one out um, on LOA um, leave of absence. They were sick. So it's been pretty tough, but we've been managing the routes pretty well. Fernando, are they, are they okay? Yes. Are they getting yes. are they getting fire? Okay. okay. Yep. Very good here. Yeah, one yeah. of them. Um, I mean, even though they came back positive, they wanted to come back immediately because they were they they did they weren't feeling any sickness, you know. So and we have one back. Well, that's, that's good news. That, yeah. That's yeah. good news. That's that's very good to hear. So they okay. had very little side effects. So good. good. It's very good. Um. All right. Well. Uh, is there any more questions for Phil in that regard? Okay, we'll move on to item 12, general manager's report. I'll be very brief. Um, just wanted to mention that um, we 
when the package of service reinstatements was approved in, in late June, you know, we, we sort of saw the storm on the horizon with the staffing. So we did kind of make it on, you know, pending staffing availability. So we haven't implemented anything except one part of it. So the, uh, the Route 300 made, it, made its maiden voyage today on the first day of school. So that was really good. Um, we didn't have any riders to speak of, but nobody knows about it. And nobody's been going to in-person classes for a long time either. So we expected a slow start. Um, I did go out, we're, we're working to establish a new bus stop uh, adjacent to the Crescent Elk Middle School. So I was out there, um, cities on board with it, but they wanted to make sure the school was. So I dropped in this afternoon and talked to um, the principal. The principal was real busy. So he and I are gonna do a Zoom to follow up, but the assistant principal and uh, clerk in there were very excited that we're gonna be there and helping with their transportation needs. So that was a really good reception. It was really um, heartening to see that. So um, we'll be probably doing the same thing at the high school this week too. So the marketing is gonna start um, we just had two or 300 copies. Uh, we created a school student rider cheat sheet, so to speak, a flyer that has the times for the 300 on it and the maps of where it goes. So we'll be distributing that to all the schools this week and next week too. So it'll pick up. We expected a slow start with the pandemic and all, but the 300 is back. So now once we can get some drivers higher, then we can look at the other aspects of the main statement, which was Saturday service and another hour in the evenings that was approved. Hopefully before the before the snow flies, so to speak, although it doesn't snow much here. But uh, yeah, hopefully sooner than later we can get that service restored. Very good. Very good. Any uh, any questions for Joe? I just can't uh, believe. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, yes, Bo, go ahead. I, I, I'm sorry. I'm just still taken back from the beginning of this meeting when when he said that applicants said that they were dirty on plot and just I, I just can't believe it. I'm sorry. I, and I know you again, it goes right back to having trouble finding help. But just I mean, I don't know. I I can't that, believe it. And it's actually, it's. Know. It's plaguing a lot of industries. There's a lot of industries that are struggling to find people because they have substance problems. And, you know, people think that using marijuana isn't one, but when it comes down to it, it So it is really something that, that a lot of industries start, struggle with. So, yeah, I, I'm glad that we can confidently. Our drivers are not under the influence they're, when they're driving people around. <laughs> yeah. I, anyways. All right. That, that was all I had. Sorry. But I do appreciate that. They, yeah. I appreciate that they were up front about it. So they didn't like waste a bunch of time. Yeah. That, that's the yeah, biggest thing. I mean, because they could have just been like, oh, no, I'll probably be clean. Maybe. I mean, as a probation officer, if anybody ever said <laughs> it should be. That always was a red flag for me. <laughs> it gotta be. <laughs> In the old days before the legalization, they would just act shocked when they came up dirty. Now they're just telling you right up front. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, anything else from everybody? Anything for the the order? No public Dan, comment. You've been you've been awful. You've been awful quiet, Dan. I've been mute, actually. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Um, I be believe we still are just us on my screen. No public yeah, here no public. to speak yeah, up. I, so we'll for go yeah, ahead, Dan. I, I would like to uh, say it's been a pleasure and a delight to work with Valerie uh, through this. Uh, I didn't prep you at all. But it's go ahead. really been... Uh, ideal and hope, hopefully we'll work with you again. That's very but sweet. I, I did kind of did the did same with Darren. that one. <laughs> Valerie, did you pay him? You I know. Well, no, Bob's hey, coming back. Should, and I was hey, just, it, Darren. I miss you guys. We we yeah, that's right. you, didn't we, Darren? <laughs> and there's no reason we can't have both of you. <laughs> no, it's either Bob uh, or me, guys. Uh, <laughs> and, no, anyway, it is sorry. a pleasure working with Valerie. That's true. Yeah, thanks so much. Welcome. All right.
that, then we'll adjourn to the next meeting on September 27th at 5.15, with the exception of Valerie. <laughs> you could always pop in as, a, as the public. Yep. I know, public. you're right, we'll Fernando. Thank public. you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's, yeah. Since you don't have it, you can always come on in. <laughs> Sounds good. All right, everyone. All right, guys. Take care. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. Okay. Have a great evening. Good night, guys. Good night.